So there's been some version of a Tetris movie in development since at least 2014, with one producer saying they had a story so big they wanted to make a trilogy out of it. Well, nine years later that trilogy never quite happened, but even in just one movie, the Tetris that made it to screen has a much broader story than I think anyone expected. This film has little to do with the playing of the game itself, but is about the attempt to get the licensing rights for the game out of the Soviet Union and into the rest of the world. There was a lot of jokes made about this movie's existence, but I think its biggest strength and its success relies on how it does have this absolutely crazy, true story about how it came about. I love how one of the most popular games of all time came not only from such humble beginnings, but also got caught up in all this Cold War bureaucracy. And on that level, it's pretty interesting. But even though that is a great story, this film wasn't a great vehicle to tell it. This star is Taron Egerton, who is a fantastic actor. It's insane to me that Rami Malek won an Oscar for Bohemian Rhapsody, and Darren Egerton didn't even get nominated for Rocket Man, a far superior performance in my eyes. But as good as he is, there's not enough for me to latch onto with his character in Tetris. He plays Hank Rogers, he's the one who's made it his mission to get the licensing rights for the game. He doesn't take no for an answer and is crazy enough to bet his entire life on this tiny little game. I just wish I cared a bit more about him. He has a wife and kids, but they feel like props to give him something to care about rather than real people, and you never feel their presence outside the scenes they're in. It's also a performance that at the start feels a little heightened. At the beginning, tonally, this felt very close to the Weird Al Yankovic movie, which really could have worked had it stayed that way, but as it tries to transition to the serious threats of the Soviet Union, none of it felt very cohesive, and it ends up being one of the most tonally inconsistent films I've seen. Part of the problem is I could just never quite buy into the world. This takes place in England, America, Japan, and most importantly, the Soviet Union. It's a worldwide story, but was filmed almost entirely in Scotland, and you can really tell. And look, it was likely for a budgetary and COVID reasons, and on that level, fair enough to them for making the film work under those constraints. I can admire it on a craft perspective. But at the end of the day, the world never felt real. They rarely do wide location shots, and when they do, it's very clearly on a green screen. And even a lot of the internal locations really felt like sets. And so when I'm supposed to believe that we're in the Soviet Union, there's spies around every corner, the location here becomes integral to making this story tense. And so when you don't believe in it, it's a problem. I kept thinking about this one scene from The Social Network right after the opening, and it's just a two minute scene of Mark walking home. There's no dialogue, it doesn't advance the plot, but in a movie that's almost entirely people talking in rooms, this scene becomes integral to setting up the location. It gives the story a sense of place, and it grounds everything. This film never quite had that sense of place. I like the tension being in the Soviet Union brings, but I just never bought into it. And that's really not held in the latter half of this movie when it decides to throw in an exciting, dramatic car chase in which cars randomly turn into pixelated blocks and back again. On one hand, it's trying to be serious and have this scary location, and then on the other hand, it's trying to be fun and light and video gamey. And I usually love movies that are able to combine the serious and the silly, but this film isn't able to make it mesh at all. But even if it was, the serious moments have none of the weight you'd want them to. A big part of the film is Taron Egerton's character meeting with the creator of Tetris, and so there's this element where you have the American guy and this Russian guy, they're strangers, completely different people, different cultures, but somehow they've been brought together, and ultimately their lives are at stake and forever intertwined. This relationship is what should be the heart of this movie, and it has elements of it, but I never believed in it. Which was weird, because this film's director also made Sam and Ollie, which had that brotherly connection in spades. The film wants to be the social network, but it doesn't form the character relationships, nor does it have the top tier dialogue you need to make any of that work. So Tetris ends up being really weird. It's not silly enough to be funny, but it doesn't really work as a drama either. They turned an insane story into a pretty forgettable movie. So unfortunately, even though there's a lot of potential here, it's no surprise it ended up straight to streaming. Tetris has its moments but I'd give it a strong four.